Bonjour. Son comme il est digo. Not comme il est en train de se faire. Da qui, qui me tewing. Que oe qui se gaba à cette année chinabe. Que oe ni me tiga mogon, an chinabe et chinicate, venessi nan. Si te benda gus, gi go. Oe qui va se gué yang et ni me tega à cette wagon. No, I na metes do tem. Sema, sema rengi shoshka na mago. Oe, tip me. Tashin da man bangi gego. Oe, ten shinabe toy ni nan. Anigona, anigona ni on is sin ni bio oe. Ni shinabe toy. Mi etes. Oe geni mano, hanje bagiten desang geni mano. Pangi ego, chitta ti bacci man, che ni capisce, capisce o abbanda man, capisce o abbanda man, che capisce o abbanda man, che ni 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 capisce o abbanda man, Rapi, rapi, e si mette in questo momento, non si sente. I just want to introduce myself. My name is uh, Francis Kavanaugh. I'm from uh, North Comego and First Nation. I'm, uh, and I belong to the uh, Metewin Society, also the Dun Sundance Society, and the uh, traditional drum and, uh, and the roundhouse society. That's who I am. And I uh, also I belong to the Sturgeon clan, and I'm also the uh, they call me Ogichita. I mean it's uh, another word for I'm the grand grand chief of a uh, grand council treaty number three in the North Tristan territory, and our territory covers uh, 55,000 square miles just east east of Thunder Bay to the uh, many just over the Manitoba border, south to the American United States border and uh, to the about the 60th parallel going north. So that's that forms the territory that I represent as as Zogichita, the Grand Chief. And I've been offered tobacco to provide some some teachings with respect to who we are as Anishinaabe people. Sometimes there is a lot of uh, misunderstanding of who we are, especially when we uh, when we sit across tables with uh, with the uh, non-native uh, non-native uh, governments that we need to we need to deal with, uh, we need to negotiate with, and sometimes when we when we come from the perspective of uh, of who we are as Anishinaabe people, you know the uh, <clears throat> the way we follow. Uh, The way we follow the rules and regulations that have descended upon us through from the Creator, and uh, so a lot of times there are uh, the non-native struggle to understand where we are. So a lot of times, uh, a lot of time is wasted uh, trying to bridge that lack of understanding. So, uh, so this is one of the reasons why I uh, allow myself to be uh, to be videotaped and talk about some of these. Uh, some of these teachings that we carry. Like right today, you know, there's a crisis going on right now about forest fires threatening uh, our First Nation communities. In particular, uh, Bikanjikam is being uh, evacuated. I believe there's close to, I'm not certain, about 3,000 people that are being evacuated to, uh, to other areas. And uh, right now there are cries, cries out for help, you know, the, the uh, coordinators of the evacuation uh, planning committee and this and that are are calling calling uh, Ontario or or First Nations Ontario if they wanna if they wanna be a host community for some of the evacuees or or if you wanna be be volunteer and head out to Thunder Bay and help out with the the people that are over there at this point in time so that's what's happening. And then the teaching I wanna I wanna talk about in in that regard is uh, when I was first married, me and my wife lived with uh, my grandmother for about three four years, and uh, every night was like uh, listening to a professor 
telling us stories about the past, how they lived and what they did in terms of, uh, you know, we all he hear about uh, the effects of climate change today and, uh, you know, and a, lot of, and a lot of people attribute what's happening with forest fires is because of, uh, because of uh, climate change, you know, so uh, anyways, in that regard, she, she used to talk about uh, when the MNR first started uh, started practicing uh, prescribed burns, you know, they'd burn islands and this and that, or controlled burns. My grandmother used to tell tell us that uh, we, as First Nations people, also had prescribed burns, you know, and that uh, in, in one particular example was uh, blueberries, you know, blueberries uh, grow in a certain area you know, for about four years before uh, competing vegetation takes takes over, and then there's very little uh, blueberries will grow in that certain area. So to get uh, to get ready for that in, for that event, you know, where there's a lack of blueberries to harvest, they used to do their own means of uh, prescribed burns. You know, what they used to do is, uh, my grandmother used to say, they would offer tobacco to the uh, the pipe carriers in the communities, and uh, those pipe carriers would get together and uh, smoke their pipes and, uh, and, and ask the Thunderbirds to come, to come and ignite, ignite a certain area, certain area of uh, land where they, where they want it to burn, in terms of us, uh, so that would be a place where the blueberries would grow. So what would happen was uh, during that ceremony, uh, sure enough, you know, perhaps that night uh, the thunderbirds would come, the thunder clouds would roll in, lightning would strike and ignite uh, an area, you know, so there'd be a forest fire in a given area the, which they choose. And then uh, after a uh, certain acreage, the certain acreage was burnt, again the, uh, the pipe carriers would all again get together, smoke their pipes, and this time they would ask the Thunderbirds to bring a heavy dump of rain to, to put out the fire, you know, that's how they did it. And, uh, and that, was, that wasn't the only purpose, it was not only for the blueberries, but uh, the other element being that uh, we also have uh, animals, you know, that uh, eat big animals like the moose, deer, bear, wolves, you know. And sometimes they carry parasites, maybe uh, wood ticks or whatever, you know. And uh, and whenever a forest fire goes through in a given area, there's a thermal, thermal uh, heat. I don't know how far down it goes. But uh, the ground retains that thermal thermal heat for for some time, and these animals would come to this area and roll around in the in the on the ground. There was uh, one way of them to rid themselves of the parasites that were that were uh, you know attaching themselves to to their uh, to their hides their hides. So that that was another purpose for for doing that. So. The other uh, part of it too was uh, infestation of uh, certain insects. Like uh, there might be uh, there might be uh, some type of beetle that uh, attacks trees or you know a certain tree. And uh, sometimes they would, uh, if they knew there was a uh, an infestation going going in a given area, and to uh, eradicate the uh, the invade the uh, the insect they would again do a prescribed burn and try and control the uh, the devastation of trees you know and stuff like that and uh, that was another another way of uh, prescribed burns you know was, again my grandmother used to talk about uh, about uh, wood ticks you know how when they got so plentiful you know they could they they, I've never seen it myself, but she used to say they rolled themselves up into like a softball, you know. And then when it became, and it, when it became that extreme, you know, again that's what they would uh, ignite the forest fire in a given area to get rid of those uh, wood ticks. Also, 
you hear about uh, evacuations, you know, that's what I started off with uh, this topic, you know. Evacuations, again, she said they were unheard of, you know, they were, uh, whenever a forest fire, there was, you know, there was also natural forest fires that, uh, that our uh, pipe carriers didn't necessarily ask, but, uh, you know, natural occurrence, you know, we, you know, you have storms, you have uh, thunder, you have lightning, and sometimes there was a, uh, you know, uh, a, a forest fire started by you know a storm or else careless use of fire by uh, by uh, campers, you know, fishermen or whoever. You know, those are those type of things are sometimes unavoidable. You know, and uh, and if that was a situation, and if that forest fire came too close or was heading in a direction of a First Nation community, again, the, the pipe carriers would get together, sit down and, uh, sit down and then, um, and smoke their pipes and ask the uh, Thunderbirds to uh, bring, bring rain, you know, a big, a heavy dump of rain. So they'd put out the fire before it got to that extreme where, where the community was overcome by smoke and uh, evacuation was necessary. So those type of things they did. They also uh, they also asked for rain in the in the same manner when the, there was drought conditions, you know, and uh, because our people relied on uh, agriculture as well. They had uh, they had gardens and uh, to supplement their uh, their uh, supplies of meat that they would uh, smoke over the summer and hopefully last around Christmas before they would go out and hunt again. So. So those type of things they did, you know, and uh, I guess uh, my point being too, uh, by talking about uh, the present situation of evacuations and uh, the thing is, uh, well, I think we have forgotten who we are. You know, I think our, our people, our First Nations people need to go back to those ways of controlling the environment, the climate and uh, you know, if, uh, like what's happening right now, you know, I believe in my, I believe wholeheartedly that we still have the capacity to control, to control the environment, uh, climate change, and you know, and uh, do, go back to the ways, the, the ways of our forefathers, our grandfathers, and uh, we still have people that are very, very capable of doing these things. So what I'm saying is, uh, why not? Why not pick up our pipes and uh, perhaps uh, designate a day of prayer? You know, a day of smoking our pipes and ask Creator to. Uh, I guess uh, what I'm trying to say is, we need to rebalance, rebalance our relationship with uh, Mother Earth, the Creator, and all of the spirits that reside in these given areas. You know, for me, that is the missing element, and that's why we're seeing this devastation going on. The other point being, also in the last three, four years, you know, we hear stories of uh, where powwow grounds are are devastated by heavy wind and stuff like that. And again, those those are unheard of. You know, those that never happened before. You know, and uh, and I believe that's uh, that's because we have uh, lost. Well, we have lost uh, some of our ways, you know, and we need to, we need to go back. We need to reconnect with uh, Mother Earth. We need to reconnect through our ceremonies, this and that, and um, you know, these things are happening because there's something wrong, and we need to find out what's wrong. You know, even uh, we have also, we have also our um, our institutions of governance too. We have. Uh, we have uh, shake tents, we have uh, sweat lodges, we have Mitewin lodges, we have Sundance lodges, you know. You know, there's nothing stopping us from asking in these ceremonies, you know. You know, Grandfather, what is it we're, we're not doing? What is it we're, we're doing wrong? You know, we need, to, we need to go there. That's what these, uh, that's what these uh, ceremonial lodges are for. That's what our ancestors used, you know, to look into the future or to mitigate certain circumstances, you know, to create re or create the rebalancing of uh, whatever situation it was way back then. That's what they used. They used their pipes. They used their lodges, and uh, 
that's why we're here. That's why we always say we're a resilient people. You know, we've survived through many attempts of, uh, you know, genocide. Let's just say genocide. You know, there's been uh, policies that uh, were intended to get rid of us as as a people. You know, even when they first uh, people first arrived here, you know, they they put a price on our scalps. You know, there was. You know, in those days, they were, they were paid five five bucks a, a scalp when the, when the, the wage of the day would have been maybe 25 cents, you know. So that was big bucks when somebody took a, a scalp from a Nishinaabe person, you know. So that's what's happening, you know, and we're still here. You know, we're a very resilient per people, and uh, we will continue to be to be that. And uh, and even uh, further, further so if... Uh, if we pick up our uh, our culture, our our traditions, our ceremonies, we will become we will become stronger. We will we will overcome the catastrophes that we have right now. Not only forest fires, but uh, flooding and this and that. You know, it's Mother Nature fighting back. You know, for, because of the uh, destruction of the environment, the polluting of the environment. You know, that's why I say we we have the means to control that. So. That's what I wanted to say with respect to uh, with respect to what's happening today with uh, evacuations and all. You know, my heart my heart goes out goes out to the people that uh, are evacuated time and time again from their their communities. That's that should never happen in this day and age. So, and like I say again, we need to go back to our 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 culture, our pipes, our ceremonies, and bring and rebalance our relationship with Mother Earth and the Creator and the spirits that reside in the area. Yeah.